While Alexandra sat in her car thinking, she noticed there was a car in front of her. This seemed to be the same one that had been following her. When she was leaving the rich district, this car suddenly appeared and slowly followed behind her. They were in a busy area where there were many cars, so she did not pay much attention to it at that time. But now, Anya was going to a place that seemed very remote. It couldn't be a coincidence that this car was following them. Something felt very wrong. Alexandra's heart skipped a beat. The palm of her hands that were holding the steering wheel started to sweat. Was she overreacting because she and Anya had been kidnapped? Or was Anya really in danger? The traumatizing experience of being kidnapped and whipped by Melissa was still vivid in her mind. She could still hear the sound of the whip cutting through the air. Squeak. Alexandra could not help but stop the car. She was breathing heavily and took out her phone from her purse to call Anya. She kept searching for her contact information, but then remembered that after Anya was rescued, her phone was changed for her protection, and she did not have it. That's right. I'll call my brother. Yes, I'll give him a call and tell him that Anya might be in danger. Alexandra muttered softly to herself as she hurriedly looked for Leslie's phone number. However, just as she started to push the button to dial the number, she suddenly hesitated. Was she being paranoid? What if she was wrong? If that was the case, not only would she be wrong, but now Anya would know she was following her. Would Anya be angry with her? Alexandra noticed that the suspicious car and Anya's car were getting further and further away. She felt so conflicted about what she should do. Forget it. She gritted her teeth, then threw the phone into her bag and started the car. It was better to just continue to follow them. If she saw anything suspicious, she would immediately call her brother and tell him. However, when she looked around, both of the cars were already nowhere to be seen. Where did they go? I need to find them. Alexandra hit the steering wheel in annoyance. She looked around with her eyes wide open and immediately stepped on the accelerator, hoping to find Anya as soon as possible. On the other side, the captain of the bodyguards who was driving Anya started to get suspicious. The same car that had aroused Alexandra's suspicion had been following them for several miles. He looked at the car through the rearview mirror and said, Miss Anya. Hmm? Anya was looking at her phone when she suddenly heard him call her name and looked up blankly. I think the car behind, bang. He didn't even finish his sentence when the car behind suddenly accelerated and crashed into their car. He quickly turned the steering wheel, forcing the car to stop by the side of the road. Luckily, Anya was wearing her seatbelt, or else she would have been pushed into the front seat. Miss Anya, are you all right? He hurriedly turned his head to look at her. Anya picked up her phone that she had dropped and put it into her backpack. She waved her hand and said, I'm fine. What just happened? He saw that she was fine, so he quickly turned around. They were parked in a remote place, and there were not many cars passing by. If whoever was in that car wanted to do something to them, this was the best place. Just then, two big men got out of the car. Without any hesitation, the captain gave Anya a look and immediately closed all the windows of the car. Although she did not know what happened, her expression became serious. When the other bodyguards sitting on the passenger side saw this, he quietly put his hand into his pocket and secretly held his gun. The two big men came to the front of the car and lightly knocked on the window. Although there were only two of them, the captain did not let down his guard. He would not open the window and ask, What's the matter? I'm really sorry. I accidentally hit your car. Would you mind opening the window so we can discuss compensation? The men stood in front of the window and asked kindly. No need. The captain shook his head, then slowly stretched out his hand, trying to get close to the emergency button. Bang! With a loud sound, a bullet passed through the thick glass window and embedded itself into the captain's hand. The bodyguard sitting in the passenger seat immediately took out his gun and pointed at the two people beside the window. However... There was another gunshot. 
Before his finger could pull the trigger, a bloody hole appeared in the back of his head. No one knew when, but Anya's car had been surrounded by a group of people. The warm blood splashed on her face, making her freeze and unable to move. She couldn't even close her eyes. She just stared blankly at the hole on the back of his head, watching red blood flowing out. The captain that had been shot in the hand knew that his teammate was dead, but all he could think about was protecting Anya. He endured the pain and stretched out his other hand. The only way Miss Anya could have the possibility of being saved is if he could press the button. Bang! Bang! Several gunshots rang out in succession. The captain's hand and the left shoulder were both injured. The pain and excessive bleeding made him lose consciousness. The group of people was still surrounding the car, and one of them opened the car door. Just as Anya started to come to her senses, the cold muzzle of a gun was pressed against her temple. A cold sweat began to seep out from her forehead. She tried opening her mouth, but did not know what to say or do. Get out of the car. The man holding the gun ordered coldly. Anya stared at the dead team member and the unconscious captain. The crowd in the office suddenly rushed up. Why did things suddenly become like this? The two people who were talking to her just now, why were they covered in blood now? Why? Get out of the car. The man holding the gun pressed the muzzle of Anya's temple again. Anya bit her lip hard and told herself not to cry. If she left obediently, perhaps the people passing by could save the captain. If she tried to delay, perhaps neither one of them would have any chance of surviving. Anya took a deep breath and then got out of the car. One of the men held a gun to her temple. The rest of them surrounded her and followed her all the way to their car. Get in. The man behind her pushed her into the car. She stumbled into the car and felt a sharp pain in her knees. The group of people was still staring at her. They closed the car door and drove away. Shortly after they left, Alexandra, who had been looking for Anya, saw Anya's car parked by the side of the road. Alexandra quickly stopped the car and ran over. When she saw the captain and the other bodyguard lying in a pool of blood, she was so scared that she screamed and fell to the ground. It took several minutes before she was able to get her trembling body up. When she stood up, her mind went blank and she looked at the terrifying scene in front of her. Just then, the captain, who had been unconscious, slowly opened his eyes. Oh my gosh! Alexandra was so scared that she immediately took a step back. She did not know if she was seeing a human or a ghost. She looked at the captain, whose face was covered in blood, and opened her mouth to speak, but no words would come out. I... The captain used all of his strength to turn his eyes and look at the red button on the car. Alexandra was so afraid that she did not notice where the captain was looking. She just stood there stunned and didn't move for a few seconds. Finally, she wiped the cold sweat on her forehead and looked around the car. When she saw that Anya was not there, she looked at the captain who was on the verge of death and asked in fear, Where is Anya? The captain lost too much blood and was unable to move. He relied on his last bit of willpower to move his fingers to point at the red button in the direction of his eyes. Alexandra, who had been in a state of shock, finally reacted. She followed the captain's gaze and looked at the red button. She asked, Do you want me to press it? The captain's half-closed eyes immediately lit up. He weakly blinked his eyes, letting her know that it was what he wanted. Alexandra bit her lip and reached out to press the button. At the same time, in the Godot group building far away from there, an ear-piercing sound suddenly rang out. Timothy, who was in the middle of a meeting, had a cold look in his eyes. He immediately stood up and ran out of the meeting room, leaving behind a group of employees who looked at each other in dismay. Rick Z, who was sitting at the back of the meeting room, and Theo, who was sitting next to him, were stunned when they saw Timothy leave the room so frantically. Then, 
they both immediately ran out of the meeting room to see what was wrong. Once they were out of the meeting room, Timothy was nowhere to be seen. Rick Z was confused and nervous. He quickly took out his phone. Just as he was about to call Timothy, he saw that Timothy was calling him. Rick Z hurriedly pressed the call button and did not have time to ask anything when he heard Timothy's cold voice. Anya is in trouble. I installed a locating tracking device on her phone. After checking it now, it showed that she is in a remote alley not far from the Rich District. She is heading toward the East Bay of Harburton. I am rushing over there now. Arrange for people to meet me over there immediately. Rick Z tried comprehending everything Timothy was telling him and nodded and said, Yes. Then he hung up the phone and quickly left. What happened? Theo pulled Rick Z's arm and asked. Anya is in trouble. Rick Z shook Theo's hand away and quickly left. Had Anya been kidnapped? Theo started to panic and he immediately thought of all kinds of scenarios. Timothy had a lot of enemies, but no one had the courage to kidnap Anya. Furthermore, it wasn't public knowledge that Anya and Timothy were together and how important she was to him. As for Heath, he did not have the ability to do that. Could it be Jen? Theo gritted his teeth. She did not have the guts. Nicole. Theo's fist suddenly loosened, and then he suddenly clenched it even tighter. If it was Nicole who did this, he would definitely make her suffer. Theo tried calming down and took a deep breath. He turned around to look for Nicole. He pressed the button of the elevator angrily, and his blood was boiling. He continued to take deep breaths so he could think clearly. Just then, his phone rang. He took out his phone and stared at it for a few seconds before answering. Jen, I'm going to find Nicole right now. It is a very important matter. Don't bother me. Theo, you sound so upset. Is it because of Anya? Theo immediately stopped. His face became red, and his hand tightened around his phone, making the veins of his hand unconsciously pop out. Jen, how dare you? It's you! Jen, who was on the other end of the phone, heaved a sigh of relief. Anya was kidnapped as expected. Jen, I order you to tell me where Anya is right now. Theo, come and find me. I'm in an apartment in the city center. When you see my people, you will know where Anya is. Jen hung up. Hello? 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 Dang it! Theo cursed in a low voice and ran downstairs as fast as he could. He wanted to find Jen as soon as possible. He wanted to save Anya and get this crazy woman out of Harburton. After Jen hung up the phone, she looked at the door indifferently, waiting for Theo to come. She did not panic, nor was she afraid. She was calm and composed, because she knew that when Theo came and heard what she had to say, he would definitely change his attitude. The moment she saw Nicole, Jen began to play a very strategic game of chess. Neither Sue nor Theo knew about this game. Not even Nicole, who was used by Jen, knew about this. Jen deliberately said some things to make Nicole jealous. She wanted to make her mad, so she would want to hurt Anya, and then she would help her with that. Those people who kidnapped Anya were very strange. Why did they wait for Anya to go to a remote place? Jen guessed that the time must have been right, and they took advantage of that opportunity. Jen hoped that Nicole would be more hardworking. She must get rid of her before Timothy finds Anya. Jen stretched out her white and slender hands and looked at them proudly and carefully. Her nails were nicely trimmed and painted. The best thing about her hands is that they had never been stained with blood before, but they always did unbelievable things. Even Theo, who had always been smart, was under the control of her hands. She took the initiative to tell Theo about what happened to Anya and asked him to come to find her. Jen wanted him to walk right into her trap. No, no, Jen smiled. This game of chess was only the beginning. The good show was yet to come. Anya had disappeared, therefore Timothy would not have time to care about the Godot group. This would be the perfect opportunity for Theo to step up 
and take over the Godot group. She was helping him. Theo would definitely be grateful to her. Thinking of this, Jen leisurely poured a glass of red wine and sat on her sofa. She took small sips of it and slowly waited for Theo to come. After Alexandra pressed the red button, she looked at the captain of the bodyguards anxiously. Where is Anya? When the captain saw her press the red button, he gently let out a sigh of relief and fainted. Hey, 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 don't faint. She was extremely anxious and turned around flailing her arms. She frowned and made a few turns on the same spot. Suddenly, she saw that there were traces of wheels spinning on the road. She stared at the wheel marks and her eyes suddenly lit up. She immediately ran back to her own car. She stepped on the accelerator in a panic and suddenly slammed on the brakes. She took out her phone and dialed a number. Before the person on the other end could say anything, Alexandra shouted loudly, Brother, something happened to Anya. I'm going to save her now. Someone else is injured at the Godot Villa. Hurry up and call the hospital. When she finished speaking, she immediately hung up the phone before Leslie could say anything. She sent him her location and drove the car at full speed. Alexandra, what are you talking about? Where are you now? Stay there and don't move. I'll come and find you immediately. Hello? 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 The blank dial tone played in his ear, and he began to panic. Before he could put on his jacket, he made a phone call and ran out of the office. The sun was especially bright, and the summer season had just arrived. The already hot weather made it easier for people to get annoyed and for the days to drag on. Anya's current feelings were the complete opposite. It was the adrenaline-filled feeling of a gun being pointed at her temples. That feeling of death following her like a shadow made her feel like she was in an ice cellar. She closed her eyes to take a few deep breaths and was able to calm herself down a little. She remembered that Timothy had told her that he would not let her get hurt again. She believed him, and now she was in this situation again. He had never steered her wrong before, so maybe she could put some faith in him. For now, she would not anger her captor and wait for Timothy to come to rescue her. She looked around trying to observe the situation inside the car as quietly as possible. There were about a dozen men in the vehicle. All were dressed in ordinary clothes and had the appearance of ordinary people. If these people walked in a crowd, she would not have thought that they were attackers with guns. Just now, the two men who pretended not to hit her car were sitting on her left and right side, with guns pointed at her. She could not see the person who was driving. The man sitting in the front passenger seat recognized him. Even if she only saw a sliver of his face, she would know who it was. It was this man who shot the members of the bodyguard team to death and who injured the captain. A wave of resentment gushed out of Anya's chest. She stared fiercely at that man. When Timothy came to save her, she was going to make sure this man would definitely die a miserable death. Perhaps her hatred was too obvious and gradually attracted the attention of the man beside her. Hey, what are you looking at? The man shouted coldly. Anya was so scared that she quickly pulled her thoughts back. She moved her throat and withdrew her gaze. The man huffed and looked away. Seeing how obedient she had been, all of the people near her nodded their heads in satisfaction. Similarly recalling what had happened just now, the man sitting beside her suddenly looked at the man sitting in the front passenger seat and asked, Boss, you shot the person in the front passenger seat to death just now. Why didn't you shoot the driver? The man up front thought for a moment and said, our original plan was to follow the woman's car. Then we should have tied her up. But the driver took her to a remote place where it was convenient for us to capture her. I didn't know if he was one of Director Weston's men, so I had to take him out. In any case, with Director Weston's power, no one will try to investigate anything. A very smart decision. The person who had pointed the gun at Anya quickly flattered him. The man in the passenger seat laughed lightly, and did not speak any more. Hearing their conversations, Anya slightly rolled her eyes in her heart. 
The boss really thought too much of himself. The captain of the bodyguard team was so conscientious, responsible, and unyielding. How could he possibly compare? His being injured indeed gave this group of people a huge advantage. Suddenly, a white light flashed in Anya's mind. It was Jen who had let them take this path. Surely she didn't do it on purpose. Furthermore, if she was with the group of people who kidnapped her, the bodyguard captain would have been able to figure it out. Thinking of this, Anya let out a sigh of relief. She lowered her eyes and comforted herself by telling herself it was all a coincidence. Her kidnapping had nothing to do with the captain or Jen. Anya bit her lips and looked out of the car. She found that the car seemed to be heading towards the beach. Who were the people who kidnapped her, and what was their motive? Who was the next person she would see? In the luxurious apartment in the middle of the city, Jen was sipping on a glass of red wine. Before she finished the second glass, Theo broke through the door and entered. She heard the sound and was not startled. She raised her head slowly. She saw Theo wearing a light blue suit with a white shirt underneath. His tie was ruffled. His hair was also a little messy. He covered the bangs on his forehead perfectly, and there were a few locks sticking up. He probably came in a hurry and did not have time to tidy up. Jen curled her lips and felt that it was a little cute. However, the look in his eyes was not very cute. She hid her smile and looked directly into Theo's eyes. His eyes were filled with anger, irritation, and a trace of torture. Jen rarely saw him like this. She knew that his nature was cold and bloodthirsty. It was only when facing his enemies that he would reveal his true self. In the past, she had given him suggestions and suggestions. He had praised her for being smart and showed her a warm smile. But now, because of a mere girl named Anya, he actually gave her the evil look. His fingernails dug into his palm bit by bit until the tough and sharp nails pierced through the flesh of his palm, leaving a wound. He had to keep reminding himself that this clear pain was necessary to get the truth and be able to do right by Anya. So, no matter what, he had to let her taste a pain that in a thousand, no, ten thousand times more painful than what he was feeling at the moment. Jen held herself back and did not say anything. Theo stared at her and walked step by step until he was in front of her. Without any hesitation, he grabbed Jen's fair neck. He did not say a word, but fiercely tightened his grip and said to himself, Jen, you deserve to die. Jen's fair and gentle face was immediately red from the constriction. As Theo increased the strength in his hand, that unnatural blush gradually turned white and then slowly turned into a terrifying green color. The, the, Theo? Even though she felt that she was about to suffocate, Jen still maintained a faint smile. She opened her mouth and said dumbfoundedly, If you strangle me, you will not know where your precious Anya is. Theo, who was extremely angry, suddenly shivered. He then forcefully threw her onto the sofa. With a bang, slammed into the sofa and slowly sat back down. Theo's long legs approached and directly leaned over her. He used his cold fingers to pinch Jen's chin. His eagle eyes continued to emit a bloodthirsty light. Where is Anya? Jen looked at his eyes, but her eyes were moving. She moved her red lips and gently shook her head. I don't know. He was stunned. Then he laughed in anger. Jen, you tricked me? I actually didn't. She reached out her hand and gently caressed Theo's handsome face. She smiled bitterly and said, But if I did not say I knew where Anya was, why would you come to find me? Theo suddenly grabbed her slender wrist and his brows unconsciously furrowed. His hate for her was growing. Anya had gone missing, and she thought it was a good idea to lie to him to get some flirting time in. He hated the way she thought she was deep in love, when in fact, she looked like a madman. Theo shook her hand away and stood up gently. 
he turned around and faced Jen on the sofa. Leave. Leave this city. Not the country. Immediately. I don't ever want to see your face again in the future. After he said that, he walked quickly to the door. He was going to continue looking for Anya. Theo! Jen suddenly stood up and pounced toward him. She held him from behind, and her hands tightly hugged his waist. There was a sobbing tone in her voice. Theo, don't go. I don't want you to go. Psycho! Theo coldly spat out two words, then stiffly pried her hand away and continued to walk forward. Her hands were flung away, and she stood where she was. She watched Theo's figure getting further and further away, until he reached out and opened the door. Theo, this is a good opportunity. It is also the only chance... She shouted loudly when Theo was about to walk out of the door. He did not know what Jen was talking about. He stopped in surprise, but did not turn around. Seeing him stop at the door, Jen smiled complacently. She knew that she was the smartest person. Theo needed her. He would never be able to leave. Theo! She slowly walked forward. Although I don't know where Anya is. Thinking about it carefully... The only person who has a grudge against Anya recently and has the courage to kidnap her is Nicole. He was stunned. How could he not have realized this? It was definitely Nicole who did this. Jen continued to speak softly. You must have guessed this matter too. But have you ever thought that Anya's disappearance is the best opportunity for you to seize the Godot group? If you seize the company, won't Anya be able to stay with you every day? Isn't this your biggest dream? His eyes flashed. He hesitated for a few seconds and finally closed the door. He turned around and looked at Jen. What do you mean? I knew it. She shook her head and tried to hide her smile and jealousy. Theo, according to your intelligence, you should have found this opportunity earlier than me. But really your life has become a mess all for this one girl. It's a little sad. I hate listening to nonsense. Theo, think about it carefully. Anya has gone missing. Timothy must be going crazy to save her. Even if he had saved Anya after going through many twists and turns, according to the degree of importance he attached to her, he would still prioritize Anya for a certain period of time. Jen's eyes flashed with a shrewd light as she continued. Then, as the manager of the Godot Group marketing department and also a portion of the shareholders, it is time for you to communicate with those partners in secret. If that is the case, by the time Timothy reacted, the position of the CEO would be available. Theo's brows relaxed a little. He could not help but clench his fists. Her words were not unreasonable. If he could start implementing his plan when Timothy had no time to care about other things... Even if he had been wary of him before, this operation could still catch him unprepared. It was because he was too panicked and did not think of this. Theo changed his mind and saw Anya's face appear in his mind. She was not afraid of 10,000. He was just afraid of one in 10,000 getting lost. If something happened to Anya, even if he obtained the company, it would be useless. Jen did not expect him to hesitate when he heard this method. She anxiously took a step forward and advised loudly, Theo, what are you hesitating about? The opportunity is right in front of you. If you let it escape in vain, how can it be worthy of your preparation and planning for so many years? Theo closed his eyes. His chest became stuffy because of the contradiction in front of him. Just like Jen said, this opportunity was once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. If he gave it up, he would not have it again. However, he could not let go of his worries about Anya and focus on scheming against the company until he knew she was okay. Theo, you are worried about Anya, right? She could see his hesitation was based on worries, but she needed to win him over. He closed his eyes and did not speak. Jen could not help but sneer. Theo, aren't you worrying too much about Anya? Theo took a deep breath and opened his eyes to look at Jen. However, he still did not say anything. He had always been decisive. 
This time, he really hesitated. Jen secretly gritted her teeth and took a deep breath. She explained in a good voice. Theo, you are 50% confident in the past, but now you have a 90% chance of success, and you were hesitating. Do you think Timothy, the president of the company, deserves his position? He can't even save Amir Anya. Theo, because of Anya, you don't even have the spirit to fight anymore. After the reminder, Theo's brows suddenly relaxed. That's right. Timothy's ability in some areas was not even comparable to his. Saving Anya, of course, was as easy as flipping his hand. It was true that he cared too much about Anya. Hence, he was a little hesitant in deciding on a big matter. Flipping his hand. It was true that he cared too much about Anya. Hence, he was a little hesitant in deciding on a big matter. Theo, you finally figured it out. When Jen saw his expression, she knew that her plan had succeeded. Helping him get to the position of the president of the company had always been Jen's wish. Only by helping Theo get what he wanted could he know his intelligence and wisdom, and only then could he pay more attention to her. As for Anya, she was not as lucky. Jen laughed lightly. When Theo got the position of the president of the Godot group, she would slowly be able to slide her way into his life. Anyway, Anya was no match for her now. Of course, Jen hoped that Nicole would be able to live up to her expectations. It would be best if she could get rid of Anya this time. If that were the case, Theo would have a greater chance of getting the position of CEO. He would also have one less powerful opponent. She just needed to stay by Theo's side and comfort him in the future. There was almost no such possibility. Jen knew that Nicole could not do so, and Timothy would not allow such a thing to happen. Therefore, she felt that she needed to think about it carefully. What she needed to do now was to help Theo win over the old director who was very important on the board of directors. With her... Theo would have twice the results, with half the effort, in the following matters. All right, Theo, since you have made up your mind to seize the position of the president of the Godot group, let's discuss what we should do next. She pulled Theo's arms. She coaxed him to sit down with a kind tone. I still remember the discussion we had at the restaurant. You talked about one person who had a lot of power. Was he the member of the board of directors who had evidence against him? Theo immediately looked at Jen and did not answer her question. Instead, he asked, So at that time, you already knew that something was going to happen to Anya, and you had already started to plan to use her accident to help me seize the position of president? Jen smiled noncommittally. Are you trying to denounce me? Yes. I wasn't sure at that time, but I had an inkling. Jen shook her head and had an innocent look on her face. At that time, she had also thought of a solution. She never thought that Nicole would take off like this. Even if that is the case, you also know about it, don't you? He looked at her, hoping for the truth. If I told you, would you still let today's matter happen? No. Theo shook his head firmly. But if you stop this from happening also lose the best chance to obtain the company. She brushed her hair behind her ears and spoke in a casual manner. I have been by your side for so many years. Of course I know what to do. I've kept this from you to prevent you from being emotional. And the facts prove that what I did was right. Theo stared at Jen's face and realized for the first time just how smart she really was. In the past, he realized that she was a keen thinker, but to plan something this advanced was amazing. There won't be a next time. Theo stared, flashing a warning her way. There will be no next time. Jen smiled and shook her head. If we succeed this time, she said, shaking her head, you would be the hot shot of the Goodell group. At that time, who would dare to touch Anya? That's right. If he became the CEO of the Godot Group, he would be able to be with Anya without any obstacles. At that time, he would not let her get hurt again. 
Perhaps Jen's blueprint for Theo was too beautiful. His brows gradually relaxed, and he could not help but forgive Jen for lying to him just now. Jen helped Theo straighten his bow tie and said, All right, now we should go and see that man from the board, right? He nodded and let her continue to straighten up his clothes. I have already instructed Sue to investigate that old director. Now that we have some evidence, plus some things that Heath knows, I reckon that it will not be a problem for us to deal with this old director this time. When he heard that Jen had already arranged everything, he could not help but sigh. I appreciate your help. Then when you become the CEO, don't forget that I have helped you a lot. Jen smiled like a flower. Other than me, I will give you anything you want. Theo also made a solemn promise to Jen. But if I have you, I will have everything. Jen arranged his suit and tie and took a step back. Jen looked at him from a distance and felt that he was a little more handsome. So what if he had calculated everything? As long as she could get her hands on him, she would die happy. However, when Theo heard her words, his expression gradually became serious. He once again made it clear to Jen. Jen, remember I... All right, now is not the time to say it. What we need to do is find Heath and discuss the matter of meeting that old director. She interrupted his words without any explanation and held his arm. Theo also knew the main and secondary. Since Jen did not want to listen he would do something more important than the first. Both of them had their own plans, so they calmly walked out of the door and continued to do their own things. The scenery flying by in the car windows changed from desolate to bustling, then became empty again. Andi did not know how long this car had been driving until it finally stopped. At this time, a gust of wind blew into the window, bringing with it the saltiness of the sea. Anya turned her head to look and found that her car was parked on a beach. What are you looking at? Get out of the car! The man sitting next to Anya pointed his gun at her forehead and ordered sternly. She bit her lips and carefully got out of the car. The sea breeze was very strong and it blew Anya's hair into her face and it was tangled in seconds. She looked into the distance and saw the endless sea. Not far away, there was also an extremely luxurious parked yacht. Anya looked back and saw that there were many people standing behind her. There was no possible escape. The mastermind behind the arrest would probably be on the luxurious yacht. Anya was thinking and saw a few small figures appear on the yacht. Because the distance was too far, Anya could not see their faces clearly. Anya got a weird feeling in her gut when she saw a female figure flash by that looked somewhat familiar. She frowned and tried her best to figure out why she felt this way. Gradually, the group of people who came down from the cruise got closer. The person at the front was a man in a suit with thick and heavy gold rings on his fingers. Under his sparse hair was a somewhat fierce-looking face. His pair of small eyes flashed with light from time to time. Anya pursed her lips. She was sure she did not know this person. She continued to look into the distance and finally looked behind the man. It was a row of well-trained, black-clothed men. They wore sunglasses and looked at her expressionlessly. She did not recognize these people at all. She shook her head and did not understand why they wanted to capture her. At this time, the row of strong men slowly moved to the sides. The woman that Anya had always felt familiar with finally appeared in front of her. Nicole! Anya stared blankly at the woman in front of her. Yes, that's me. Nicole smiled complacently, and her cute baby face became ferocious and scary. Anya, darling, are you afraid? In the morning... Nicole went out with a large group of bodyguards. After circling around Harburton for a while, she let them return to the villa. As for Nicole herself, she went to the yacht and waited for the good news. Nicole's home was far away, but her family still had some connections in Harburton. That day, 
when she asked her father for director Derek Weston's phone number? This was what she was planning. Of course, this director Weston had been in the business world for so many years, so he had to be vigilant. When Nicole asked him to help her kidnap Anya, he was very careful. He even sent some people to investigate her identity and background before he agreed. In order to protect Anya, Timothy did not reveal her importance to the outside world, so no one could find out her true identity. To the outside world, she was just a small fashion designer. After Weston heard about Anya's insignificant identity, he agreed to help Nicole capture her on account of Nicole's parents and Timothy's childhood. Not only that, but he also tried to get to know Timothy through Nicole's relationship. Little did he know, he had already committed a huge mistake. However, Nicole didn't want to ask about Director Weston's personal life. He had helped her capture Anya, and she did not need to know more. Furthermore, Timothy might not know about her and Director Weston, so she needs to be as non-suspicious as possible. Nicole, are you crazy? Anya looked at Nicole in disbelief. Why did you kidnap me? Because. Nicole opened her mouth and almost said, Because Timothy likes you and cares about you. I will kill you. Timothy is mine. She wanted to say this, but Director Weston was still in front of her, so she could not say this. Because I hate you, Nicole smiled and said ambiguous words. Nicole, I advise you to let me go now. Otherwise, Timothy, shut up. Nicole immediately interrupted her. She walked forward and forcefully pinched her chin. Don't touch me. Anya knew she was a madman. She thought Melissa was the worst thing she had dealt with, but Nicole was just as bad. What kind of monstrous physique did Timothy have? Among the women who liked him, other than herself, the rest were crazy. Kneel down for Miss Thomas. As soon as the man standing behind Anya finished his words, he felt her leg get kicked from behind. She instantly fell forward. Her knees sank into the sand, and she was kneeling in front of Nicole. Nicole looked down and laughed at Anya, who was on her knees and suffering. Anya gritted her teeth and was about to stand up, but in the next second, a metal item was pushed onto the back of her head. It was the muzzle of a gun. Anya gulped and could only give up her pride and stay kneeling on the ground. No matter what, she had to save her life and save it for Timothy to save her. She had to persist. With this thought, Anya did not continue to move. Her eyes coldly looked at Nicole and said, Nicole, you can stop this now. It is not too late. Do you think I will stop? Nicole raised the corner of her mouth and asked back. Anya pursed her lips until they turned white and did not speak anymore. Such a madman. No matter what he said, he could not do it. String her up. Nicole crossed her arms over her chest and started to instruct the men. Tie her up and then put her into the water every few minutes to soak her. When the sea tide rises, just throw her into the sea. Yes, Miss Thomas. When the man heard her, he immediately went to get the rope. Timothy will not let this happen. Nicole, quickly tell them to stop. He won't forgive you. Anya felt that there was a rope around her neck and waist. Nicole's face darkened, and she hurriedly looked at Director Weston, who was behind her. If this man knew about the relationship between Anya and Timothy, he would stop helping her. If she would have known earlier, she would have cut off Anya's tongue first to avoid making her scream. However, when Director Weston heard her words, he suddenly laughed. He hurriedly said to Nicole, as if he was trying to please her, Miss Thomas, this woman is so funny. What kind of person is Timothy? Is he nice to you? He turned and only acknowledged Nicole. You're telling me that Timothy is making things hard for you because of this small designer like her? Nicole immediately heaved a sigh of relief. She nodded at Director Weston and her face was filled with a relieved smile. She continued to wave at the group of men and yelled even more arrogantly, Continue! 
Yes. The group of men answered in unison and tied Anya up in no time. Let me go. Anya kept struggling, but was still tied up by the group of men and pushed to the beach. Oh! Anya did not say anything, but her entire body was immediately pressed into the sea. Her arms were tightly tied up, and she could not move at all. The seawater with gravel soaked Anya's hair, and the salty and turbid waves kept rushing into her nose and mouth. The feeling of suffocation became more and more intense, and she struggled as she lost all of her strength. She slowly lost control over her body and tried to hold her eyes open, knowing she would pass out momentarily. Just as Anya's consciousness was about to blur, two men, who were pushing her in, immediately lifted her up. She started to breathe heavily. Usually, she did not pay attention to the air, but at this moment, it was so precious. The Cole stood by the side and looked at Anya's wet and messy appearance and finally laughed heartedly. Anya, you still have today to live, but don't expect anything more. She let out a maniacal laugh like a villain. Anya's chest was still rising and falling, and her nose was feeling uncomfortable from the salt water. She did not pay attention to Nicole's ridicule. On the contrary, she felt that Nicole was very pitiful. Nicole did not understand that there were many things in the world that could not be forced. She also did not know that sometimes letting go was the best way out. She would only hysterically force everything, and in the end, turn herself into a madman and have a miserable ending. Dunk her in the water again. The coal had laughed enough, and then gave an order. Anya's face was once again submerged in the water. Anya tried her best to adjust her breathing when her face was close to the surface of the water. She closed her eyes tightly, waiting for the torture to come again. In the next second, Anya was pressed into the water again. She held her breath, hoping that the water would not be like it was before, almost choking her lungs. One second, two seconds, three seconds. Time passed bit by bit. Anya felt incomparably tormented. Her adjusted breathing gradually became somewhat irregular, making her feel as if her lungs and nasal cavity had been cut by a sharp knife. The feeling of suffocation swept over her once again, emptying the energy that she had left. Nicole did not have enough time to appreciate Anya's struggle before she stayed in the water obediently and did not struggle anymore. Nicole was exasperated and did not care about the expensive dress on her body. She lifted her leg to grab Anya's hair and pulled her out of the water. Anya once again came into contact with the air. She did not care about the pain on her body and the hair that was being pulled as she did her best to breathe. Anya did not pay attention to Nicole. She felt that her head was becoming dizzier and dizzier, and her nasal cavity was as if a foreign object had entered it. She had to do her best to breathe and keep herself awake waiting for Timothy to save her. The more Anya did not speak, the more furious Nicole was. She stared intently at the side of Anya's face. Even though Anya's body was covered with muddy water stains and her hair was messy, Anya's face was still pretty. The pain of lack of oxygen made her frown slightly, and it gave rise to a feeling of tender affection. Anya's painful appearance caused the two men beside her to be slightly moved. Because the kidnapping was of great importance, they did not notice that Anya was a beauty. Nicole glanced at the two men and shouted, Tie her up and throw her into the sea to feed to the sharks. The two men were shocked. Now? Yes, hurry up. The two men nodded submissively. They stretched out their hands and used ropes to tie Anya up a little tighter. The speedboat Nicole wanted to be driven to Anya's side. Water splashed all over Anya's body. She closed her eyes, but did not know what to do. Am I really going to die in this ocean? Anya shook her head and said to herself, Timothy, where are you? What Anya did not know was that Timothy had already gone through several red lights in a row and was doing his best to get to her. 
After they tied Anya up, they crudely carried her towards the speedboat. Let go of me! Let go of me! Anya used all of her strength in her body and began to struggle. She did not want to die. She had not officially remarried Timothy yet. Anton was still so young. How could she bear to leave him alone in the world? Anya's tears finally fell. Those tears mixed with the water on her face kept falling to the ground. Anya trembled as she was forced towards the speedboat. The distance between her and the speedboat was getting closer and closer. Anya's heart became heavier and heavier. The sea breeze dried the water stains and the tears on Anya's face. She lifted her eyes and looked into the distance. Just as the group of men carried Anya onto the speedboat, Anya suddenly heard a woman scream behind her. All of you stop! Everyone looked over and saw a woman standing not far away. She was dressed in fashion and looked noble. However, due to the distance being too far away, they were unable to clearly see her appearance. Alexandra saw the man who was holding Anya stop and immediately let out a sigh of relief. She had followed the tracks of the wheels to look for Anya for a long time, but the good view did not last long. Their tracks of the wheels were actually getting lighter and lighter. When they reached a cross, it was completely gone. Alexandra was so angry that she wanted to curse. If she chose the wrong path, wouldn't Anya be in even more danger? Finally, she chose a path and rushed over. She did not expect that she would actually choose the right path. Alexandra saw Anya in a sorry state in the distance and quickly ran over. Do you guys not want to live anymore? If you know what's good for you, put her down immediately. Alexandra's voice was very righteous and stern. The distance between them shortened, and everyone finally saw Alexandra's face clearly. She was a celebrity that was famous throughout the country. Her jewelry company was even more well-known. The group of people did not react for a moment and did not know what to do. Alexandra ran so fast that she was panting. When she got to Anya, she could not even say a word. Anya looked at her blankly and was surprised that she would appear there. The first to react was Mr. Weston. With a warm smile on his face, he walked in front of Alexandra. Although he did not know why she suddenly appeared, Mr. Weston was very clear about her identity and status. You have graced me with your presence. I hope you don't take offense. Mr. Weston smiles at her, but I do not know why you came here. Cut the crap! Alexandra finally managed to catch her breath. She waved her hand and did not look at Mr. Weston. She ran in front of Anya and pushed the two men beside her. Both of you, get lost! Although Alexandra used all of her strength, the two men who were holding Anya were both very tall and strong. Her strength was like an itch in their eyes. The two men looked at Alexandra and then looked at Mr. Weston, waiting for his judgment. Alexandra's actions and words were so obvious. Even an idiot like Mr. Weston could tell that she wanted to save Anya. What was Anya's background? First, she provoked Nicole. Then, she could make Alexandra come along and save her. Puzzled, Mr. Weston could not help but look at Nicole. Of course, he had to give her respect and let her decide. Alexandra's family background was far from Nicole's. Are you deaf? Didn't you hear me? Alexandra, who was pushing the men to the side, became angry. She kicked them hard and then looked at Anya with concern. Anya, are you okay? She was still wet and there was some dirt on her face. She looked at Alexandra and suddenly felt that she had returned to the days when she had just become good friends with her. I'm fine. Although she felt that her head was a little dizzy and her lungs were in pain, she still forced a smile at Alexandra and shook her head, indicating that she was all right. It's good that you are all right. Alexandra let out a sigh of relief. She did not notice Anya's pale face and instead went forward to help her undo the rope on her body. Hey, who are you? Nicole finally reacted. So even though Alexandra was very famous, she did not know who she was. How dare you kidnap Anya? 
Aren't you afraid that Timothy will rip you into pieces? Alexandra gave Nicole a sideways glance and continued to help Anya untie the rope. You! Nicole was so angry that her face was crooked. She took a step forward and grabbed Alexandra. Get lost! Who do you think you are? We're leaving. Alexandra reached out to push Nicole. Compared to Alexandra, Nicole was too petite, so her strength was not as great. With just a light push from Alexandra, Nicole fell onto the ground with a plop. Mr. Weston's subordinates did not step forward. These two women were the young ladies of a large company. They did not want to offend them, so they could only stand aside and watch. Nicole smashed her fist against the beach angrily. She turned to look at Mr. Weston. Hurry up! Send someone to tie up this woman and throw her into the sea with Anya. Mr. Weston took a step back and pretended not to hear her. Although Alexandra's family background and wealth were not as good as Nicole's, he would not dare to take Alexandra's life. What? You can't even take care of two women? Nicole was flustered and exasperated. She started to use Mr. Weston to vent her anger. What use do you have? When Mr. Weston heard this, he was unhappy. He had clearly helped Nicole. From the tone of her voice, why did he become her dog? The reason he had spent so much money and resources was that Nicole had promised him that she would recommend him to Timothy. Now it seemed that she did not have that much ability. Alexandra did not give her respect, but was courteous to Anya, who had an ordinary status. Alexandra, who was standing at the side, went crazy. Untie her! Don't make me angry! Alexandra was very angry that the rope could not be untied. I am warning you! Alexandra used her index finger to point at Nicole, and then at Mr. Weston, and roared, Now immediately untie this rope! Nicole panicked. Who exactly is this woman? How did she know Mr. Godot? Mr. Weston's face darkened even more. If Anya had mentioned Timothy's name just now, he would have thought that Anya was dreaming. However, Alexandra was the young lady of the Lynch group. Leslie had a good relationship with Timothy. When these words came out of her mouth, Mr. Weston felt that something bad had happened. After being stunned for a second, Mr. Weston quickly said to the two men beside Anya, What are you standing there for? Hurry up and follow Alexandra's instructions. The two men were shocked by Mr. Weston's change in attitude. When they reacted, they hurriedly began to loosen the bindings on Anya. Anya let out a sigh of relief. Although she had suffered a lot of grievances and torture, if she could still live and see Timothy and Anton, Anya would not worry about anything. Alexandra also went forward to help untie the rope. Nicole, who had been staring at Anya, suddenly rushed towards her as if she had gone crazy. No, I cannot let Anya go. I want her to die. If Mr. Godot knew that I had kidnapped Anya, he would never forgive me. Only when Anya dies will I be able to be with Mr. Godot. Anya and Alexandra quickly retreated and avoided Nicole's attack. Hearing Nicole's angry roar, Mr. Weston's legs almost went soft. Could Anya really be related to Timothy? And it was a very intimate relationship? Quick, quick, stop this woman. Mr. Weston originally wanted to rely on Nicole to make his business earlier, but he did not expect it to become like this. The two men hurriedly ran forward and blocked Nicole. Let me go. Let me go. Nicole was not willing to let her original plan become like this. She hysterically tore at the two men and looked at Anya with blood-red eyes. Please calm down. The two men diligently stopped her, even though they were just doing these things for her. Let me go. Let me go. Nicole did not hear the words of the two men and continued to shout. Suddenly, she touched something cold and hard. She looked down and saw that it was the gun that was pressing against Anya's head. Nicole did not hesitate to grab the gun, and the next second, she aimed at Anya. Anya, go to hell. There was a dull sound of bullets piercing flesh. A woman's shrill and painful scream resounded in the sky above the sea. 
Everyone was stunned by the gunshot and what happened in front of them. They were so scared that they stood rooted to the ground, not daring to move. Nicole fell to the ground. She reached out to cover her injured left shoulder and screamed in pain. Ah, my shoulder! Anya and Alexandra stared blankly at Nicole, who rolled on the ground. They did not know what had happened. It was Nicole who picked up the gun and aimed it at Anya. Why was Nicole injured in the next second? Anya! Timothy threw down the gun that was still smoking and ran toward Anya quickly. The strong sea wind blew his hair, and his face was filled with panic. If he had not arrived in time, Anya might have been killed. Timothy's chest still couldn't help feeling pain. Timothy! The moment Anya saw Timothy, her face suddenly turned sour. She was very strong. Even though she was injured and almost died, she didn't cry or complain. She just wanted to live. But now, grievance surged in Anya's heart, and her tears fell. Timothy rushed over and hugged Anya. He used his hands to hold Anya's face and looked at her carefully. Her face was unusually white, without any signs of life or blood. Anya felt wronged again. Timothy, how could you fail like this? I'm sorry. Timothy looked at Anya, who was with pity in his eyes. He had used all of his methods to protect her, but there was still an incident. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Timothy kept repeating his apology. He tightened the strength of his arms and wanted to pull Anya into his body. In this way, he could protect her forever. Anya was originally angry with him, but when she saw him blame himself, her resentment disappeared. She quickly comforted him. I'm fine. I'm okay. Anya suddenly coughed violently. After being pressed in the water for such a long time, Anya's body had problems, but because she was in a state of stress at the time, she did not feel it. Now that Timothy came to her side, her body relaxed, and the pain all over her body surged. Timothy hurriedly looked at her nervously. He picked Anya up. I'm taking you to the hospital immediately. Alexandra saw the hero saving the beauty and could not help but sigh. She even used her phone to take a picture before following. Nicole was lying on the ground, screaming and wailing, was in so much pain that she did not have any strength left. She could only widen her eyes and look at Timothy's back. She fiercely bit her lips. Mr. Godot is mine. Mr. Godot is mine. Mr. Godot. Mr. Weston saw Timothy coming and quickly went up to greet him. He did not dare to hope to befriend Timothy anymore. He only hoped that he could beg for mercy and not be killed. Get lost. Timothy did not even look at him. He continued to rush forward. Rick Z and Leslie rushed over. They saw Timothy running from afar with a person in his arms. When they got closer, they saw that it was a pale Anya. So they hurriedly helped Timothy put Anya into the car and drove towards the hospital. The sun slowly fell from the center of the sky. It began to become gentle sunlight and it gently sprinkled on an old villa on the outskirts of Harburton. This villa was not very large. It looked very ancient. The red walls were peeling a little and gently fell to the ground. In the courtyard, there were white tulips planted everywhere. The entire villa was soaked in the fragrance of the tulips, making people feel that time was moving very slowly here. Okay, if there is anything, I will tell you. You just need to be busy. An old man's voice came from the old villa, slow and heavy. After hanging up the phone, the old man slowly walked out of the main hall with his hands behind his back and came to his courtyard. Looking at the tulips, a smile appeared on the old man's face. His eyes were filled with brilliance, as if he was recalling something. Sir, you have visitors. The maid's voice interrupted his thoughts. He was stunned for a moment and looked at the woman walking toward him. Who is it? One of them is the manager of the Godot Group's marketing department, Mr. Theo Godot. He brought two assistants with him. Do you want to see them? He waved his hand. Let them in. The maid turned and went to the front door, 
where Theo, Jen, and Heath were waiting. This old man had a very important position in Godot Group, but because of his old age, he rarely went to the company, so people who visited him usually came to his mansion in person. He had never married and had no children of his own, but an adopted boy who was now studying abroad. He had been involved in a big case. After the old man spared no expense to save him, he sent him overseas to study. He stayed in this villa with only one or two maids to take care of him. He could afford a villa that was tens of thousands of times better than this one, but he had never thought of moving out. He would spend time with his flowers and drink tea. Theo's purpose in coming here was to rope the old man in and use some threatening methods when necessary. Jen saw the maids walking over from afar and hurriedly went forward. She asked through the large, old-fashioned iron door, Does Mr. Tuck agree to see us? Yes, please come in. Theo and Jen nodded politely at the maid and walked in. Theo lowered his head as much as possible to not let her see his face. He followed Jen and Theo and walked forward. Mr. Tuck sat quietly in his rosewood chair, sipping the tea in his robe, waiting for Theo's arrival. Mr. Tuck, hello. Theo walked up with a smile on his face. Jen put the tonics Theo bought for him where Mr. Tuck could see them. Mr. Tuck glanced at them. They seemed to be very expensive, so he smiled politely at Theo. Theo, come and talk to me. I am very well. I really don't need those things. You are healthy, but you can also be better. Jen said, Theo went to a lot of trouble to buy these tonics for you, so I hope Mr. Tuck can accept it. Later, let the servants prepare them for you, and they will be good for your health. Mr. Tuck smiled and turned his eyes to Jen. He looked at her from head to toe. This girl is really sweet. Although I don't go to the Godot group often, I still have some memory. Miss, you don't seem to be from the Godot group. Theo smiled. She is my friend, and her identity is much more important than my assistant's. I hope Mr. Tuck won't take offense. Mr. Tuck smiled brightly. He drank another mouthful of tea and then looked at Heath, who had his head lowered. And this is? Why is his head lowered? Theo looked at his head and looked at Heath and answered Mr. Tuck's question for him. He is also a friend of mine. Let's talk about something else. Mr. Tuck frowned slightly. Of course. What do you want to ask? I came here mainly to ask for help. Theo smiled politely, like a very polite and humble subordinate. Is that so? What do you need my help with? I hope you can vote for me in the meeting that will be held in a few days. A uh, vote for what? Mr. Tuck smiled. It's been a long time since I have asked about the Godot group. An old man who owns shares in a company is just an old man. It is useless. It is something that you can help with. I hope that you will not decline. Theo smiled politely. Mr. Tuck nodded. All right. Tell me first. What's the main purpose of the meeting that requires my approval? Theo paused for a moment. He looked at Mr. Tuck and told him his plan in a low voice. The clock in the villa was ticking. Theo's voice was steady and slow, but Mr. Tuck's face was getting more and more serious. After Theo finished his words, Mr. Tuck's face completely changed. He did not answer Theo immediately. He just raised the cup in his hand to take a sip of tea. It was slightly cool in his mouth. Only then did he realize that the tea was no longer hot. He put it down and looked at Theo. It's impossible for me to do it, but I can pretend that I didn't hear what you just said. I have already thought it through. Theo crossed his legs, and his respectful attitude changed slightly. Since Mr. Tuck did not agree to it, what he would do next would be reasonable. Young man, you have to think carefully. With your strength, you won't be able to fight Director Godot. Why are you so stubborn? Mr. Tuck felt a little helpless when he saw how determined Theo was, but he wasn't too excited. With your help, we will be able to achieve twice the result 
with half the effort. Mr. Tuck was a little angry. He took a deep breath. Young man, you have to be careful. You and Director Godot are both the sons of the old CEO. He can't use the shares in his hands to overthrow Director Godot. Even if the old CEO remains neutral, your shares, your mother's shares, plus a small amount of shares in my hands, are still not enough. Mr. Tuck does not need to worry about this. Theo's tone was very casual. I have done business in the business world, and I will never do business that makes me lose money. He had a few shares of the Godot group in his hand. I still need to rely on retirement. I hope that you won't be delusional enough to expect me to take down Director Godot with you. Anger appeared in Mr. Tuck's voice. Is that so? Heath, who was standing next to Theo, spoke. He slowly raised his head and revealed his face, then looked at Mr. Tuck. When Mr. Tuck heard those impolite words, he looked at the owner of the voice. When he saw Heath's face, Mr. Tuck's face changed. Heath! Mr. Tuck stretched out his wrinkled hand. Why are you here? Mr. Tuck, long time no see. Heath smiled. Heath's aura became more and more gloomy. Even though the corner of his mouth was raised, there was a deep chill in it. Mr. Tuck could not help looking at Theo. There was an unconcealed shock in his tone. I didn't expect you to be so capable. Even the former manager of the Godot Group's marketing department is here. Aren't you afraid that I will call the police? Since I have brought Heath here to see you, it means that I have full confidence. Theo shrugged his shoulders. Is that so? On what basis? Mr. Tuck, do you remember that your adopted son got involved in a lawsuit a few years ago? Heath looked at Mr. Tuck and said faintly, Mr. Tuck's body trembled, and he looked at Heath, speechless. <laughs>